So, the 1%, this media generation's favorite thematic punching bag. Truly kicking off with Best Picture winner Parasite, it seems that we can't get enough of making fun of those with all the money. Yet, no 1% satire has hit it quite as big as the HBO drama series Succession, which, after the downfall of Game of Thrones, somehow became the must-watch show of the generation. And it seemed, above all other pieces of media, to truly pull no punches in terms of its 1% satire. That is, until I watched the final season, where I suddenly realized, wait, Succession isn't about the 1%? Okay, let me be clear. Succession is, in part, a satire of the 1%. Much like how Star Wars is really just one family screwing up the entire galaxy, Succession is one family screwing up a mega corporation and, by extent, the country. Succession highlights the ignorance of those with all the power, the things they're willing to do to each other and to strangers for power, and the unexpected and often uncared for consequences of that struggle. And after watching through Season 4, I understood that there was a deeper message throughout Succession, one that you could internalize into your own life, even if you don't own a mega billion dollar corporation with corrupt news organizations and murder cruises. Incidents like theft, sexual assault, rape, murder. Okay, the bad ones. Succession follows the fictional Roy family, who run the fictional media conglomerate Waystar. For three seasons, we watch the entire Roy family manipulate and backstab each other in an attempt to gain control of the company and become not only one of the richest, but also one of the most influential people in the world. The show has been a lot of things. It's dark. It's funny. If I get drowsy and I miscall Colorado, Instability, right? Then the US loses credibility, China spots an opportunity, invades Taiwan, tactical nukes, and shit goes kablooey, and we're back to amoeba. It's a long way back from pond life because you failed to get me a double shot. It's addicting to watch these awful human beings just ruin each other's lives. But one thing it's not is emotional. Succession succeeds in having you be addicted to these characters, but never having us sympathize too much with them. Usually in popular storytelling, the filmmakers want you to empathize or at least sympathize with the characters on screen, and will use storytelling and filmmaking techniques to pull this off. Succession does pretty much the opposite. It uses storytelling and filmmaking techniques to distance ourselves from these characters. For example, the cinematography. Thomas Flight has a pretty good, albeit mistitled, video where he breaks down the cinematography of Succession, explaining its documentary and mockumentary stylings. Essentially, the camera work in Succession has more in common with something like The Office than a typical drama series. The handheld style, the bump zooms, etc. Another technique used is the music. Nicholas Bertel's score rarely matches the emotions of the characters, but instead feels harsh and oppressive. These elements combined make us feel like outsiders looking into these people's lives. As a result, Succession encourages us to judge these characters, not just through the narrative, but through the filmmaking. Considering the judging nature of the show, these characters aren't exactly, um, likable. They all have extreme personalities, Logan at the head is truly heartless, caring only for himself and the success of the business, not caring if he has to screw over and hurt even his own children. Each of his children then exhibit aspects of their father, but all have qualities holding them back. Like their father, they don't care for each other like a typical family, often viewing each other more like business competitors than siblings. The result is a show about a dysfunctional rich family where everyone always hates each other all of the time. So then in season 4, why is this show making me feel things? <laughs> for a show that has garnered a reputation for essentially being the most heartless show on television, its final season was surprisingly feely. Even before the death of Logan Roy, 
The show delved into some serious emotions with its key characters. See, Succession is about the 1%, yes, but I've noticed how it treats its subject matter differently than virtually every other 1% satire out there. Usually the focus of the satire is on the luxury of the characters' lives, and we get that in Succession as well, but usually that luxury is all we get to see. Succession is the one satire that focuses heavily on the business aspect of everything. In fact, we focus more on the business and the company more than the luxurious lives to get to live as a result of that business. Compare that to works like Parasite, Triangle of Sadness, or The White Lotus, where the focus is on the characters and possibly nice homes, yacht cruises, or vacation getaways. This is because Succession isn't just about the 1%, but is also about family. I don't have friends, I got family. Or, more importantly, the dangers of what happens when work and business replaces family. Essentially, Succession is exploring the idea of the working man who puts his energy into his job over his family and stretching that idea to its absolute extreme. Logan is someone who never cared too much for his children. He was someone who was always wrapped up in his work. Logan isn't just consumed by his company, he is his company. We used to play outside his office, and I, I think because we wanted him to hear, and uh, he would come out, and he was so terrifying. <laughs> he kept us outside, but he kept everyone outside. As a result, the Roy children only know how to interact with each other through the family business. They seem almost incapable of having proper family gatherings without it becoming a front for business deals. Weddings, birthday parties, even their father's own funeral are used by the Roy children to push business deals and partnerships first, with the actual gathering almost seeming like a secondary concern. For the Roy family, their work has replaced actual love for each other. So for three seasons, this is why we hardly see anyone in the family act lovingly towards each other. Their knowledge of love has been limited by the cruel, uncaring world of the family business, a place where even Logan acknowledges there is no room for caring. You're not a killer. You have to be a killer. For practically their whole lives, and for the past three seasons, their genuine emotions have been hidden and suppressed under facades of fake coolness, uncertainty, and uncomfortable immaturity. And in season four, those walls finally come tumbling down. Yes, I'm just very busy. And I have found I am too busy, what with my dad. And so uh, Sarah has sometimes found me somewhere so that I can have a moment to cry. You see elements of those emotions in the earlier episodes, but it really comes forth in one of the best and most shocking episodes of television I've ever seen, Connor's Wedding. The shocking death of Logan Roy acts as the season's inciting incident and focuses purely on the siblings' reaction to the news. But this episode is made all the more devastating when you consider the events leading up to the episode. The Roy children have cut Logan out of their lives after the events of season 3, so their desperation in the episode becomes about them trying to get virtually any last loving words in before he passes. That is, if he hasn't passed already. Hey, Dad. Uh, hello. Um, you're gonna be okay. And I'm sorry, it, 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 is he dead? The lack of love they were able to give Logan continues to haunt them throughout the series, in particular in the episode Living Plus, where Kendall quite literally attempts to revive Logan and promise some sort of medical longevity, motivated by his grief towards his father. Yeah, uh, we had our differences, yeah, but it is good to see you. Let's, uh, get on. Yeah, for sure, for sure, sure thing, sure. But the true idea of succession is the idea of work essentially becoming and replacing family. We see this even with the opening titles. The opening titles of the show shows home movies of the Roy siblings' childhood, interspliced with modern depictions of the company. Even the opening titles can't help but confuse work with family. Growing up without the typical love that most families receive has left the Roy children closed off and cold-hearted. Really? Yeah. The good thing about having a family that doesn't love you is you learn to live without it. Because I don't need love. It's like a superpower. 
Any sign of connection is met immediately with awkwardness, suspicion, or even hostility from the other family members. You bust them here, guns in hand, and now you find they've turned to fucking sausages. You talk about love? Work has permeated these people's minds so much that even normal conversations are viewed as cover for business deals, such as when Shiv reveals to Tom that she's pregnant. Usually this would be cause for celebration, but the two are so wrapped up in their jobs that Tom's first reaction is to assume Shiv's claim was a business tactic and nothing more. Okay, you know what? Actually, also, I'm pregnant. Yeah, by you. And there's this is never a good time to say, but you need to know, so okay. Right. Now you know. Is that even true? What? Like, is that even true? Or is that like a new position or a tactic? Everything for the Roy family is viewed through the lens of business and work. They never have and likely never will have any idea how to interact with each other in a normal, healthy way. This is what likely makes the ending of Succession the more tragic for all of them. We all knew heading into the final season that none of the Roy children were likely going to run the company. In fact, many assumed that they would be pushed out of the company entirely, and that is exactly what happened. But since work has essentially defined their relationships to one another, now that none of them are in the company, they will have to learn how to interact with each other in a normal, loving way. Something that for pretty much the entirety of the series, we've never seen them properly do. Their careers are over, but without work as a pretense for their interactions, their relationships with each other might be over as well. Succession works as a satire of the 1%, yes. But for us everyday folks, Succession can still bring a moral lesson valuable to us as well. Succession serves as a cautionary tale for us all. This is the danger of what happens when our jobs eclipses our love and our family. In the final season of Succession, the repressed emotions of the characters come pushing to the forefront, as they are unable to hide their dissatisfaction with their lives anymore, especially after the death of Logan. But even after coming together once more as a family, the business always comes first. Work has replaced the idea of family for the Roys, and they have no idea how to build a proper relationship outside of that framework. Succession is a tragedy, both for the Roy's careers, but also their personal lives. Due to their upbringing and Logan's obsession with work, none of the Roy's will ever experience what it's like to have a normal familial relationship. And that is the true tragedy of Succession. <laughs>